Let's take this to the judge, Fox News senior judicial analyst, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Judge, great to see you. I, I guess the first question is, do the athletic director and the vice president of the university, do they, are they required to report this to the authorities or not? Well, it, it's, it, it can get very uh, complex and subtle as to what is required to be reported. And in reviewing the statute for the state of Pennsylvania, it was written in an era when no one would expect that coaches would make these kind of observations. So in the list of people obliged to make the reporting, coaches are not listed in there and colleges are not uh, listed. College administrators are not there. The theory of that law is that if you are responsible for a human being and you see that human being being harmed, you have the duty to report it. Now, none of the victims in this case were Penn State students or Penn State uh, football players, and, and so technically none of them fit in that category of people who, when their abuse is no, of, of, of them is known, the people who know it and work for the university have to report it. So that probably relieves them of criminal liability. It doesn't relieve them of civil liability, and it certainly doesn't right. relieve them of liability with respect to the NCAA. So the university could be harmed by the NCAA, which would harm it tremendously financially, and the university could be harmed with respect to civil lawsuits if it knew these things were going on and did nothing to stop them. Because they can clearly show, you read these emails, Judge, that these men clearly knew they were doing the wrong thing by hiding this. There doesn't seem to be any question about that. It is unusual that we would see these emails, and we haven't actually seen them. A reporter from CNN claims to have had the emails read to her and claims that they were read by investigators who discovered them in the university's investigation of itself, which, by the way, is being conducted by the former director of the FBI, uh, Louis Free, who no doubt is conducting a very thorough investigation. But the fact that he has these means they'll get in the hands of the lawyers of the people suing Penn State, which will make those cases more expensive for Penn State. Penn State's not going to resist the lawsuits. It's not going to put on a trial. It's not going to allow these cases to go to trial. It's going to pay a tremendous amount of money so that the cases will go away. That may not help right. it with the NCAA. And, and Judge, I only have a few seconds left. We're coming up against a break here. But if this is found to be an institution-wide problem, could this jeopardize the athletic program? Absolutely. It could have profound jeopardy to the athletic program, and that would have long-term jeopardy to the university, which relies for its athletic program for a substantial portion of the money that it spends to wow. operate the university every year. Yeah, football controls a lot of things there. Uh, good to see you, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Good to see Judge, you, Trace. You. All right. Are your tweets your own? The court says no way. They belong to Twitter and can be used against you. That's the case for Occupy protesters arrested during a march on the Brooklyn Bridge last fall. The judge ruling, quote, if you post a tweet, just like if you scream out a window, there's no reasonable exception of privacy. There is no proprietary, I'm sorry, expectation of privacy. There is no prop uh, proprietary interest in your tweets, which you have now gifted to the world. Fox News senior judicial analyst and laugher extraordinaire, <laughs> Judge Andrew Napolitano is here now. I'm laughing because I spent four years in a windowless room with Kelman. <laughs> I always had to keep moving, right? I, mean, I like to keep old, going. Old radio How many studio? Advil did you take? Yeah. No, just kidding. We love Brian. Um, okay, so is this right legally? Well, it's groundbreaking, I can tell you that. It's the first case in the United States of America in which a judge has said, because I tweet to the three of you, as opposed to email just to Eric, that there's no expectation of privacy in the, in the tweet. I think that this will be appealed to a higher court. This is an entry-level court. This is a New York City criminal court that has a limited amount of jurisdiction. I think when it's appealed to a higher court, perhaps even to the Supreme Court of the United States, uh -oh. they'll be forced to apply, God knows what they'll do, <laughs> but they'll be forced to apply standard privacy jurisprudence to this. The standard rule before this case was if you communicate with three people, that's private between you and those three. Just because the three becomes 30 or 300, you don't necessarily lose the privacy. This is an Occupy Wall Street protester, and the government wanted all of his tweets, no matter the subject matter and no matter to whom 
he tweeted, and the court said, once you hit that send button, it's not yours They're 100% anymore. right. They're 100% right. Think about it. The way Twitter is right now, you want to build as many followers as possible and get your thoughts out there, no matter how inane they are. So these people put their thoughts out there. Now, all of a sudden, they're concerned about sharing it? Are you kidding? Well, there's a little thing called the Fourth Amendment. Which until yesterday, and I shouldn't say until yesterday, because this this case only apply this ruling only applies in this case. It has no effect anywhere else because of the level of the court. If this were the federal court of appeals in New York, it would apply in a couple of states. It just applies to this judge in this courtroom. But before that, the rule would have been the government has to show a reason for the tweets. It can't just ask for them, and the reason has to be some evidence of crime mm -hmm. involved in really? the in the language of. Of the tweets. But Judge, it does, does it only apply to the tweets that are sent out to the public domain? Or it, you can direct message Brian directly. Yeah. That's a tweet, technically. That's can right. they go after those? Right. I will say this to the Jeff, for the judge, as critical as I have been of him, he did sit down and read all the tweets himself and decide that some of them were hilarious. Uh, some of them were utterly not worthy of going to the but, to Remind the, me to buy government. shoes. But isn't, wasn't it in this case that they are trying to prove criminality? So it's like subpoenaing any other document that, that might help them in the case. Except that that puts the court, uh, the, the court, the cart before the horse. Because the Fourth Amendment requires that before the government can get the documents or the tweets or the emails or the text messages, right. it has to have some evidence of, of crime. It can't get them and hope that there's evidence in there. I blame Jefferson. Why didn't he anticipate the rise of Twitter, and therefore we were, we're stuck with this problem on our hands? Well, last time I spoke to Jefferson, he didn't want to talk about this. Right, I know. He's all he has to talk about is his farm. I know. Heard he might rather talk about being governor of Virginia than Sarah, he would. Does Eric Holder tweet? <laughs> That'd be a very good question. My guess is he probably does. Most of the uh, people in the Obama administration do. I'd like to see some don't, of those tweets. Don't suggest it to Congressman <laughs> Issa, because it'll be the basis of another subpoena. Yeah. Yeah. He's been All right. Busy. Have a fantastic fourth, Judge. Thanks, Same Judge. to you, guys. Right. If you drive a car, I'll tax the street. If you try to sit, I'll tax your seat. Our next guest says the Supreme Court's ruling on the health care law is a huge new tax that's created a, quote, vast new federal power. Judge Andrew Napolitano is a Fox News senior judicial analyst. And to start things off, Judge, did you always take all your inspiration from Beatles songs? <laughs> is that is that great, what our takeaway is here? Great question, Jenna. I did not. <laughs> but, but they happen to have been right on the mark with that one. Okay, so let me ask you here, what has changed, you know, from last week at this time to this week? You know, last week we didn't even have the health care ruling yet. What's really changed as far as law and federal power, in your opinion? The Supreme Court has invited the Congress to regulate private behavior, uh, behavior that is not delegated to the Congress and the Constitution to regulate, so long as it uses its taxing power to do it. So when Justice Scalia jokingly said during oral argument on the health care uh, case about three months ago, since the government may be paying my medical bills, can the government force me to eat broccoli? And the lawyer representing the government said no. Well, now, under the Supreme Court opinion, from which Justice Scalia, of course, dissented, the government can order you to eat broccoli and then fine you if you don't by calling the fine a tax. So this opinion, concocted by the four most liberal progressive members of the court, and one who we all thought was a, a conservative basically gives power on a platter to Congress, power that it never had before, power that it never exercised before, power that God only knows what it'll do with come September. Judge, a lot of us, of course, that when we do our taxes in April, think that Congress already had a lot of power as far as taxes goes and the different taxes that we have to pay. Uh, just as drawing upon your legal expertise here, what, what can possibly challenge the law or restrain it so it doesn't eventually become an argument for taxing us if we don't eat broccoli, for example? Well, well when we pay our taxes in April, we're paying taxes on income that we earned. We went out and earned it. When you put gas in the car, you're paying, paying tax on the gasoline that you bought. If you use tobacco products, you're paying federal taxes on the tobacco products that you purchase. In each of those cases, you are affirmatively engaging in behavior that you know is taxable. But this is the first time in the history of the country that the court has permitted the Congress to tax people for doing nothing. 
to punish them for refusing to do what the government wants them to do. That's a very, very dangerous precedent. I don't know if they're going to say, eat broccoli or we'll tax you, but I do know that when they want to regulate private behavior, which they are not authorized to regulate in the Constitution, they now have a tool with which to do so. So a what, tool what given restrains to them by the that court. then, Judge? Is there, you know, another legal argument, another challenge that can restrain that so it doesn't go into those areas? All right, there's two, there's two challenges. One, someone could pay the tax and then challenge its constitutionality because federal law does not let you challenge a tax until after you have paid it. The other is that another Congress and another president could undo the tax by simple votes uh, in the House of Representatives. Well, another House or another, uh, another uh, Congress or another president could undo all of Obamacare by simple votes in the Congress and the consent of the president. They didn't need the Supreme Court to tell them how to do it. Judge Napolitano, nice to see you. Thank Pleasure you for that great piece you. on foxnews.com. Thank you for playing the tax man. <laughs> we try to please you, Judge, every time you come on. One of our little victories. Judge, thank you. Sure. Well, a trade group has just released a, a code of conduct for drones and drone operators. One expert who helped write the code said this could help the industry solve its PR problem. The military frequently uses drones to fight terrorists overseas, but earlier this year, the Obama administration and Congress approved a plan to ramp up the use of this aircraft here in the U.S. by 2015. There are some group's recommendations. Folks who own or operate the unmanned aircraft should respect everyone's privacy. They should not threaten the safety of other people in the air or on the ground, and they should educate the public about the use of drones. Let's take it to the judge, Fox News senior judicial analyst, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Judge, I, I love your analogy saying, look, when the drone makers make a pledge, they're not going to spy on us. It's like, it's like General Motors promising that they're going to sell cars, but nobody's going to drive drunk or speed. I mean, th this is, it makes no sense. It does make no sense. Look, the government could enforce regulations for the use of drones for private drones, but, but that's not the issue. The issue is the government is the problem because the government has about 300 state and local police departments that have asked the FAA for permission to fly drones, and the FAA is going to have to say yes or no, and the Air Force, which recently acknowledged that it's flying drones over the United States in order to spy on us, predicts that in 10 years there'll be 30,000 drones in the sky over the United States of America on any given day, some of them trace the size of golf balls. So who is going to regulate the government when it right. dispatches drones of that magnitude? Yeah, there was that story. Remember, the EPA was flying drones. Of course, they're not. They're fly flying single-engine Cessnas trying to get water polluters, catch water polluters in the act. But, I mean, are we to believe, Judge, that these 300 or so police departments that have filed for permits to use drones or are not going to be kind of looking in on our activities? Well, it's going to be attempting for them to do so, and they probably will do so. Uh, Congressman Ted Poe, Republican of Texas, is working on legislation which will bar private drones from surveilling private property and require that government drones get a warrant, a search warrant, before they can spy on the rest of us. That would be the appropriate thing to do. The problem is not with the manufacturers. The problem is with the operators, and the government will think it has free reign to spy however it wants. There's an old joke going around. What does the Taliban and the, and the Iowa farmers have in common? Answer, they're both being watched by government drones. The Taliban by the CIA and the Iowa farmers by the EPA. The joke, the joke was set on the floor right. of the House of Representatives by a congressman, not Congressman Poe, somebody else. Yeah, you know, and you talked about congressmen getting involved here, but so far, Judge, I mean, you look back, they've been pretty ineffectual. The Congress has, has really had no teeth when yes. it comes to not using drones to spy on people. Yes. Look, that the story in the New York Times about the president and his kill list and dispatching drones to kill people, all the angst was about the fact that it was leaked to the New York Times, not that the president's using drones to kill human beings without due process of law. We have too much government, and we don't have our priorities right, and we're going to lose too much liberty liberty too quickly. And on Which that, is why happy Fourth senior, of July. <laughs> happy Fourth of July to you, Judge, the senior judicial, anal, judicial analyst on Fox News Channel. Judge, great to see you. Happy Fourth. Thank Pleasure, you, sir. Pleasure, Trace. Thank you.